finish up my show today yeah, we're just having a good day uh, it's nice and clear outside this is a Sunday and it's nice and clear and we just really have um, a good show the good show is uh, who's one of these uh, what? uh oh oh man <laughs> we can take a picture Tuesday no, uh, he's in the studio. Oh, man, he's messing me up. All right, what do you think? <laughs> I think I just better <laughs> got to cut, cut right here, folks, because... I gotta go look up some toenails. Are you uh, you you're living somewhere in the forest, by the in a house, or a room, or you know it's just funny you call it because it's like you're in a room in a forest in a house. Uh, either way, I'm in one now. Now, see the thing is, my dream is now what I have to audition for, and during my dream time, I dream that I'm somewhere else. your last name Reg? Reg? Gold? Goldstone. Goldstone. Reg Goldstone. I came to the mountain, to the mountain, in search of an Asian cat. I wanted to hear about the good guys. And I came here and end up with a whole selection of fresh vegetables. Some of them come from way, way further, and they have grown in gardens. We haven't figured out how to grow bread, flip it in. Oh, but that's so good for you. Yeah, oh, you know, but we're working on it. We're learning how to make things here. We are. Uh, we're very, very happy people came here. Apple, onion, yeah. what is it? Huge onion. Wow. Mm, fresh. Corn, carrots, celery, ginger. Parsley. And that's, all, that's what it's all about, being in Mount it. Shasta? Mm. Oh, yes, we're so close to nature here. All the trees grow so much better. And everything that we grow here, we grow.
Welcome to a day in Telos. Today we're rising vibration. say it's cold up there on that mountain. Hey girl, you're just doing fine and uh, you know what, that music just brought me out of my sleep and I was so dreaming and uh, all of a sudden I hear the music and I came out of my sleep and look where we're at. Well, the we're in a day in in Weed, California. Yeah, the goal was to rise the vibration today. So we're talking about awakening. So I'm glad you woke up. Oh, oh. Congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> me and you glad I woke up. Uh, <laughs> I'm awake, I think. Could I be dreaming? <laughs> ha! That's me. <laughs> so we are going to discuss the word awakening. Yes. What does that really mean for the individual person? Awakening, this is a very common word a lot. Like when you wake up in the morning, that's awakening right there. So and our goal is to wake up during our life. So that's awakening to bring the consciousness into the present state, awareness of personal existence and what's happening around us. So what happens? Is there like a an epiphany all of a sudden and you th you realize that you're sleeping or or is there a part of us that is awakening another part of us that is awakening and we realize that well i think there's a lot of parts of us if we're talking about that we're one with everything that there's many parts of us right but um how this all happens it comes from the desire to be awakened Desire, desire to, to be awakened. A desire yes, to be desire awakened. Yes, desire to become. So is that, <clears throat> now I want to ask you that, the, the, the desire, is that like, <clears throat> all of, what is that? <clears throat> the desire to awaken, is that something you, you, you hear something about it and it strikes, like the, the button comes, been pushed? Beep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom.
present, the one of the biggest thing and questions that uh, helped me in my life was, who am I? Who am and I? I asked that question when I was a teenager, very early, because I saw oh, abuse. Oh. 17, 15, 17, between that time. You know, about that same, I know I was driving, and one day I looked in the mirror, and I like, who are you? I don't recognize you. And it just kind of like, that just kind of transpired for many years and I was always reaching out, who am I? Yeah. Why am I here? And then I take classes and kind of validate some things that I was experiencing. This is the first question, the first step towards awakening. As soon as your mind starts asking inside of your own being, like, who am I and what I'm doing here? It's, this has happened to me because I was so, uh, I was compassionate and I saw so much abuse and pain that I, I needed to ask, but first of all, who am I, what I'm doing here? Why I'm this planet? Right. What I, what's my purpose? And what how I'm old were that? In the teens? When I was between 15 and 17 yeah, years yeah, old. Yeah. I think that's where my, 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 I was asking that same question, you know, why? Why am I here? Why do I have to go to school and, and learn stuff that I don't need to know? See, my thing was, uh, why do I need to see this abuse and experience these nasty things people do to each other? That was my thing. It's like, I don't want that. And it was pretty strong for me because I want to kill myself not knowing the answer. That's how strong my desire was to answer those questions. Because right. I'm going to leave the planet. I'm like, I have no point or no answer. I'm gone. That's a bye. <laughs> and you know, that's why a lot of people do. Yeah. A lot of... Uh, Teens and young adults, and even you know, mid age, I've, I've been not directly involved with people that like that, but you know, hearing their their dilemma and then how they couldn't couldn't go any further. Yeah, the first question is, uh, who am I? Takes life to answer. And as a young kid, we want to answer right away. Mm -hmm. We want to fix things right away. And this is also a <laughs> big brainwash of the humanity that everything can be right away done, done fast. Well, Pills, that's why we have push <laughs> <laughs> So, but by sending that um, desire into the universe, knowing who I am, universe prepared a path for me where life started answering. Yes. Not my mind. Remember that um, you can trust your mind to answer those questions, like who I am, what's my purpose, what God is. Well, stuff you have like to have that. experience. That was where I was. I figured out if I have some experience, and my 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 quest was to be uh, a nutritional person, and the whole thing about nutrition. And you had to be, well, you don't have to be, but you, I, I wanted to be uh, able to know what the person needs. And so I went to classes and I learned the, the how to, 
And it was quite, quite interesting to be an intuitive uh, counselor like that. Well, you already have gifts from the birth, and um, a lot of people do, they just ignore them. And then we have a dreams when we were kids. When we babies, we grow up, we dream about stuff. Right. All the dreams from the childhood, all the emotional states and uh, experiences, it's a foundation of the path. It's right. a foundation of who we are. And I would say that the best thing to find answers to those questions, instead of using the mind, really go inside of the body and start feeling who you are first, from your heart, start feeling You're going inside. inside, answering all those <clears throat> questions from inside. Because there's questions like, you gotta be okay being man or woman. That's what the universe, the creative force, give it to you, the body of man or woman, or both. There's people that have both gender, and we don't know those people, which is so sad. We suppress the sexuality and the understanding of who they are. So first of all, you got to find and be okay. I am a woman or I am a man, and what women and men do on this planet. Now, when you go inside, and you know, what's your little desires? What's your capability? Do you have all what you need for the human body to work here? If you don't have something, you are missing some kind of uh, part of your body, or you cannot see, or you cannot hear, or have disabilities. That's also a reason. There's a reason for that, to overcome that kind of relationship and become stronger in specific areas. So, each of us gave specific purpose from the Creator to walk it. And before we find out what our purpose is and what force of Creator means actually, we need to find out who we are on a basic human level, on level of the mind, heart and the whole body. So when you make a piece from the little toe and every cell in your body up into your existence and out of your body, then at least you already have you in your understanding. And then if you go back to your childhood and you start analyzing like all the things, dreams that you had, the talents that your parents said, oh, you're good at that, you were good at this, you were good at that, you know. Or you like, my mom used to say, you just observe always, you just sit there and watch quietly everyone. Which I never understood. For a long time, I didn't understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. Now, it's so important to observe. Now, I became observer. I don't yeah. say that I am this, I'm that, I'm everything and nothing in the same time. Right. So, I experience knowledge and receive knowledge from inner state and not from outer store, source. I respond to outer source and environment, but all the information and necessary tools and everything is already encoded in our DNA. We don't really need the books. All what we need is to have inner peace, grounding state and understanding. And then everything else comes. The books comes if you need to read something. The people come and teach you or lead you. And the, the little like instruments comes, vibrational instruments, some other tools, mm -hmm. healing and work. Everything starts to come in. But most important thing <clears throat> is to have a focus and not letting go on that question. Who are you? Because from that little cells, molecules, and every pieces of your existence, you create the path and journey to creator, and you start to understand what the creator is, what the creator means, what creator purpose to build all us and to move this world and to live a life. And so my approach was from little pieces because that's who I am. I, I look into details to, to a small atom level and to expand to universal level. Some people come from looking at big picture and they just dig into the little small cells and they're like, oh, that's what it means. So everybody has different paths. And remember, we all have a different path to walk, but everybody wanna go all up the mountain or down the mountain. So we all go all up or down. <laughs> Okay, with that, let's uh, um, take a look at those pictures that I uh, wanted to look at. We're going to take a little break on that. Keep that in mind, folks. Go up the mountain, or you go down the mountain. <laughs> Not the truth, yeah? They put you six feet under, or you go... I don't know, if you go up the mountain, what is that? 14,000 feet up? Yes, 14,000, yeah. I just went halfway. You have to go to the, the top, yeah. <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the big side. Yeah, that's a question about who we are, who I am.
and I just learned it, so could be a little rough. We'll see. I hope it. the new beginnings. <laughs> Amen? I think that it's important to know that we, we can have new beginnings. Yeah. Some people think that it's just a straight line until you're dead, but there are creations that we can do as we reach our uh, beginnings. I would say that what you're saying there, there's a lot of simple things about that. You have to truly die to go back to the time of experience, but in reality we don't need to die. And the other thing is that a lot of people cannot comprehend that everything is energy. And we are energy. And everything we do is energy. Energy, you can't kill energy. Energy will never die. All what you can do with this energy, direct it to the right direction. Or it's a positive or it's a negative, that's a personal choice. No, you should direct it yeah. in the right directions. Now, I've seen people that are spiraling down, 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 crying. 
Mm-hmm. Boo hoo hoo, everything's wrong, nothing's right. Mm. Boo hoo hoo. And they get lower and lower and lower. And then they finally hit the bottom and then it'll come back up. And then what something they do between the bottom and going up again, they hit a, a, a stop and they spiral again. Yeah, it's not, the, yeah. Is that due to the environment, energy, or the thinking? Well, the, that's how our body created with all these pathways for the energy to flow. And most of the time, people don't realize that everything we consume, food through the mouth, also hearing to what we hear, seeing to what we see, and feeling to what we feel, because an environment around us is influenced how we feel, how we react, and even how we grow, and how we develop our belief system. But most important thing is that our body has upper part and a down part, low part. And in the middle, there is a center when we unite, which is heart, it's a heart chakra. That's the center. Heart chakra is a center of unity, of energetic force, that all we're talking about to the monica level, energetic force that enters or that actually create the physical matter and the material, material form. So the heart is a center of that unity. Right. So now we're talking about rising energy or lowering energy and working with the energy. So we are energy. All of this that you experience in your own body and everybody else is a dense, fast vibration of different kind of frequency. It's very similar to yes. electromagnetic spectrum. Exactly. It's very similar. Yes. So remember, we have a low vibration, which is colors like brown, red, dark colors, orange, and then yellow. That's a low vibration going to a higher vibration. And then everything stops. Green color doesn't really exist. Green color is that pathway to universal force in between. And then when we go up higher, then you have a blue, magentas, and purple, all these light colors. That's a fast vibration, very, very fast vibration. So when uh, the first step in awakening is to say, yes, I want to be awake. Yes, I want to be awake. That's the first thing. And then just wait, the universe bring you tools and things to Can do during dream, this journey. Can we dream being awake? Um, or do you have an experience, like a vision? Okay, let's get back to dreaming is dreaming. Being awake, it means both night dream and a day dream become one dream. You don't have a separate, you understand, wait, you're wait, wait, conscious, wait. but you... Say that one again. No, the no, night no. dream and a day dream becomes a part of one. You don't separate that you're sleeping or you're living life. So can you have a dream? What's going to happen that day and wake up and it happens? It's not about happening and not happening. So a dream, it's a different world that your soul are traveling. Well, let, let me, say, it let not, me, repeat, let me yeah. say that once more time. <clears throat> the, the dream that you have that night, mm-hmm. and, and I'll say it from my point of view, I have dreams and it will be something about tomorrow. And when I wake up, maybe I forget it. But during that tomorrow, that happens, that dream, I, all of a sudden I go, oh, I had this dream about this. Oh, this is what I need to do while I'm awake in the physical. So I usually have a lot of dreams like that that help guide me, you know, stay away from things or get involved with things. Definitely, and I would say um, everybody has their own tools. Right. And this is one of the tools to walk this life. Exactly. So your soul communicating to you, if you, if your soul cannot reach you during the day, it's like, hello, Arthur, where are you there? Can I tell you something? And you're like, mm, are you in some with other world, right? right running after the dog so again. then soul knows, okay, now he's going to rest and you're going to see stuff. He's going to remember that. And this is going to be his clue or he, whatever. So you became connected to the, to your dream, to the point that they actually or it's showing you what's up to come, vibration, yes. or it's showing you what was fixed on what. It's so many things the soul, the soul can show <clears throat> through the dreams. So, I'd like to make um, uh, uh, tell you about an example that I think that was pretty good. So, um, 
a friend invited me to go to a church. And I went, I went to the church. It was a Christian church. And the minister was talking. And I'm just like watching it. And I was like, what am I doing here? And then all of a sudden, I heard him say, the Holy Spirit is like a seed in the heart. It changes your vibration. And I was like, uh, right, I don't think, I don't know, I don't know, you know, my mind was like trying to guess it out. And then he said it again, it gets greater and greater and greater. And so pretty, pretty soon, I was actually feeling that greater energy in my, my torso, my heart and everything. And I was like, whoa, what's going on here? You resonated with that. Yes. Yeah. And I was, you know, he was explaining what the Holy Spirit is and how it changes the vibration. And with that, you listen to it and you and you go along with what it's telling you to do or asking you to do, however, or giving you that, like, turn left <laughs> here or turn right. And da -da -da. But we are actually wanting to do more about the inner so how yeah. how do we see our spiritual body well spiritual body is in you right. to see it you need to go inside spiritual okay. body is a vibration of your physical form Okay. To understand that you need to go not just see your skin and see your muscle and then understand the atomic. You need to go on the atom level to understand, to feel the soul. Because soul um, acts on the cellular level, on a very, very small level. But you, you talk about the heart mm -hmm. in your story. This is very important because, like I'm saying, there is upper part and a lower part right now we have a negative and positive uh, vibration right. and it goes through our body so i want to say that a lot of people think oh, there's darkness and something dark and negative and stuff and remember that darkness is not necessarily always bad thing darkness destruction or whatever that feels unfamiliar might be also feels like I dark. Find, I it's find darkness, foundation. when I see darkness in something, I, like a question, mm -hmm. I, I, I ask a question, and I see light or dark. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Well, the thing is, the light without dark cannot exist. The universe is dark. Well, uh, and then the light creates the life. Well, the thing I, I see, let's say the positive and negative of the of the question, and then I, I see more when I go to the to the light with my journey, mm -hmm. I, I see brighter issues, things things that I like how to touch somebody and how to pray for somebody. Well, that's the thing is okay. If you see universe as a dark space, right? Just the space, the light penetrate the darkness and shows yeah. when the ray goes through the darkness. Well, this ray you can see everything because the light shines it as more light is in you as more darkness you can shine up right. light up but the light and darkness is necessary to accept to understand to see your own higher self to see your soul why yeah. it's necessary we take energy from the mother earth underneath is darkness mother earth gives us all the physical things that we need and then we receive light and warmth and be able to see consciously everything from the light mm -hmm. from the sun from the stars from the both those energy need to rise and meet in the heart so back to energy rising and kundalini and all the chakras and everything right. if a person practicing only one way to rise this energy from the earth from the darkness up from the dark constantly they might locking the light entrance in the body so that they might sooner or later they might suffer from that so when you work on rising kundalini from the mother earth through you you gotta work on accepting light through you and they both gotta meet in the heart and if one part is missing if person only into the light 
the life would not exist. If person is only into the darkness, it was too much. It would be too much confusing and lost. And right. from the darkness, you can create anything and everything in the total freedom of creation. So we gotta be fully conscious, present, and with a compassion in our heart to take that darkness and lighten up and create something. So can you show? <coughs> do we have the uh, pictures that we wanted to talk, or have they been already put on? Okay. So I, yeah. I want to ask you, this is a, an outline of what <clears throat> the spine looks like with this energy of Kundalini. Could you explain what Kundalini is and where does it come from? Well, okay, so we talk about that everything is energy. Everything, even this microphone, even all this jewelry, everything. And of course, the life being, we are energy. Kundalini is just another word for that kind of source of life, energy of life. And in the different cultures, it's called different names. Again, I'm not into books and studying all this stuff, so I have my own language and my information. So what we do usually, we take the energy from the land. We eat from the land, we communicate, we sleep, we touch. So this is the energy that arises from, from the darkness. Okay. And that energy need to be light up like a sparkle with a light to be able to get that to the awakening state. So many people call this snake because snake has that kind of vibration. There is a two different motion of energy. Snake vibration is a wavy form. It's also snake represent light vibration, light form. So this vibration got to meet the dark vibration that represents pearl. Spiral is feminine, also considered feminine, and also galactical energy that creates life. As soon as this energy starts to have a freedom of motion, the penetrative uh, energy of snake enters and life creates. The body is the same way. So when you say the, the energy starts to travel up, or yes. do you say that the energy starts to... Um, travel out not out light. not not out first there is a Does it go in? energy moves all kind of different ways the hardest thing for people to understand how to spark the beginning of awakening because the first thing is this um, you gotta wake that kundalini wake that energy to wake that energy you gotta cleanse purify yourself your way of thinking, your way of feeling towards people, all the belief system got to go. Right. And you got to connect to the Mother Earth. And that's the first, and ask Mother Earth, wake my Kundalini, wake my energy up. As soon as you yeah, get that I've been awakened. Doing a prayer on um, asking about doing that. Okay, that makes sense. Because yeah, it's, a lot when of it's, people when don't know how to get it started. Get it started is very important because yeah. some people go in the hospital when they start Kundalini. It's that powerful. Yeah. If you don't do it right, if you're missing light part of your practicing, you might end up in a hospital rising <laughs> um, and rising by force your Kundalini. Never rise your Kundalini by force. Yeah. Don't force the energy. You force in energy, the force will come back. You need to let go and move the energy. The same goes for martial arts. How do we take power, energy, force from the ground, from our stand? So it comes from the earth, rises through your legs, and then it opens up between um, sexual organs and anus. That's the point for the first chakra. When everything opens, you got to open that chakra up. And there are so many different ways, and everyone has a different way to open it. After your kundalini open, that's where the old disaster comes. That's where people start to be afraid, suffer. A lot of things come out. Emotional unsta instability, unbalances, even sicknesses come out. Because you start to open every pathway for that energy to move freely like a snake. Mm. And pathways are all over our body. Right. So, and that's where you start to become consciousness. Okay, my Kundalini is open. What's now? It starts to rise, uh, tickling me first. I'm like, okay, I'm good with tickling. And then it starts rising and going into different directions. Oh, it went there. Oh, it hurt. Oh, it went there. Oh, it jumped there. It, 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 what is it doing? So it starts to finding its way. So would you say that the point of hurting 
is perhaps blockage of some issue in your in your mind or in your body is it in your mind or is it in your body both that the pain is it's both not only it can be in the in the mind for sure because we have a power to change our body through our mind um, discipline right and then in the body as well because memory uh, muscle has a memory every time as a kid, you touch something hard and parents say, eh, don't, don't touch it and they slap you, right? That place that was slapped has a memory. Mm -hmm. And next time the child goes, oh, I was slapped here. So the, the, the memory becomes um, kind of constantly with your life. And so later on, there's more severe traumas people experience. And later on, every time somebody slap you, or some that kind of motion would activate that kind of memories and buttons and stuff like that. So that's why, yes, it's also in the body. But there is a third thing also. There is a karmic attachments we have right. that stores in both, in energetic field and in the body. And that's in the, um, the solar, like the, um, the cells itself? The uh, karmic? Yes. Consciousness? The yes, ESL okay. So the consciousness? What happened when we there the light, when we in our home, when there is one sound and it's a light and it's a God's force and it's actually boring. So when you are there, it's boring. So you want to create life for you, you want to experience something. So the, the sparkle of desire, what to live, what to do, what the purpose is, sparkle that energy and then they just start vibrating. Okay, I want my nose be like that, my eyes, be, so soul start to creating human. And by that way, okay, this, I already have this energy with me. I've been in this life, I've been this and this and this. So we're going to put in there that. And that comes with that because that life, I did something bad. We're going to put in that. And so soul gives everything back to the human body to go over and work on it again. Because the being on the planet Earth, it's educational <coughs> Is that path. Considered the, um, the dark night when everything <laughs> falls apart? <laughs> The cold and dark night is all, it's all. I actually had a, what I call a breakdown this, this winter. Uh, it was really quiet. I took pictures of my, my face, boy, what a difference. The, the sadness of, of somebody's mind, you know, going or looking at the sad things of life. Well. And then I take pictures of myself when I'm laughing and happy and stuff like that. And then I look at them again. Yeah. Hey, what's our well, time? I, I, what's we got? What's our time on this, uh, Elijah? It looks so good to us. You know, I, right. I want to share one thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I was actually asked before again and again this question. I want to see who I am. I want to see, see who, you are. who my soul is. Yes. Well, you know, if I asked that question. Let me let me answer that question to you. Okay. Well, I, I wanted to tell a story, but yeah, you say, and then I'll share share you what happened. Well, the who I am. When I died, when my body died, and they weren't able to bring it back to life. And I was outside my body. That was an awakening to me. That to me actually said, I am this divine spirit, and that is the divine body. And then when I, when my friend started doing a drum heartbeat, and I went back into my body. And I raised up. I raised up. I was alive. And the nurse was going, No, that's Rick and Mortis sitting in on him. And my <laughs> friend said, No, I don't think so. I think he's alive. <laughs> and I'm like, Am I dead? Or am I alive? But that's yeah. when that's when I really understood who I am. And I use those words, I am, because this is a, a beautiful body that, that we've been able to create, yes? Yes. And we have this ability to create this body. Mm -hmm. We should be able to understand we have the 
ability to create. Yeah, we should understand because that's what higher self does. It creates this body by this yeah. high vibration. In, in this case, my experience was I asked again, I'm like, I want to see. And the universe showed me my soul. So I was looking at my soul and I'm like, oh, makes sense. Because before I already tapped into the galactic force and I was meditating on how this life works. I want to know how the molecules, everything. So universe created it, here is your soul. So when I was looking at my soul, my soul creation, I started to understand colors, vibration, everything is in there. Everything. Oh, of course, yeah. And the first thing, my Kundalini woke up with a snake. I was in the meditative state and suddenly something started hitting my face like yeah. a window. And I'm, what's this? So I look at it and it's a snake knocking my consciousness. And I'm like, hello. And I said my secret um, kind of prayer to connect and it's release that aggressive energy because it was knocking my, like, come get I wake up. <laughs> and yeah, I'm like, and then mean, it relaxes. It does, it does. Mm -hmm. And because the thing it's is. It's important that we, uh, we let people know what to expect. Well, yes, and um, there's a lot of things people can expect when process of awakening going on, especially when the Kundalini just starts rising. When you get a chance to rise the Kundalini and unite with the light in the third eye, then you start to understand the awakening comes every other month, every other year for some people, because then every um, petal of that flower, of that third eye, of that um, um, consciousness, awareness start to open up at the time and you start to realize, oh, I realize this now. Oh, and I realize this now. And now that's what, how it is. And so it's like a petal, like a flower opens and opens and opens and opens until everything gets into the right place and you just vibrate higher vibration. But also remember the higher vibration connect to the heart. This is where we should practice. And I would say one of the most important thing is love yourself a lot because that's what will teach you how to love others. And that's where we mm -hmm. rise the vibration. And I would say loving yourself, it doesn't mean uh, n narcissism. It doesn't mean not treating others bad. Loving self is understanding self on a cellular level. And understanding then, and not, not criticizing yourself. Because criticizing, you don't know. analyzing, there is part of this, yeah. but how you love yourself, that's <clears throat> how you I love others. And that is so important because if we all want, do everything you wish that would done for you. This is how I look. It's, even if it's situation that people would judge and say, oh, this is wrong. And so I'm like, no, that's how I want people to take care of me. That's why I do this to other people. Right. True word, true to your own self. And then be present because most information comes in the present moment. I got a, a question for you. you um, I asked you, if you work with the Wisdom Center and hypnotherapy, hypnotizer. I actually never experienced hypnotizing yet. Pardon? I never experienced hypnotizing yet. No, but I'm I might hypnotize someone, but. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, let me re rephrase that. Do you work with the Wisdom Center or the, the Soul Center here in the, in the, in the stomach area? Oh, you're talking about inner body. Yeah. Wisdom. Um, well, first of all, I would say wisdom is encoded again in our DNA yeah. and it's there with whatever experience in life we already have. And then um, I'm constantly connected to myself, um, higher self, which my soul, mm -hmm. I think um, I feel the higher self is always closer to creator and I can be distracted and um, yeah miss something with my back not being able to see but yes well i was just uh, wondering because i had uh, experiences with um, uh, a, a counselor that did hypnotherapy on me for certain for certain reasons what i wanted like i, I found myself um delaying some of my work and when i decided to do change that I had asked if that would you know going into the wisdom center and say hey this is what I'd like to have happen well I wasn't sure I, that was gonna happen but I actually the next couple of days I had the 
the urge, the urge, the desire mm -hmm. to do my work, which is the, to uh, uh, put prices on things and, and new sales and stuff like that. And I started doing it and making it happen, finishing it within just a few days instead of a week of putting it on. But that was really an interesting help of waking me up because I was like, okay, I know we can do this, can, but can I do that? Really? Yes, definitely. You're talking and, about and, manifestation. And because uh, um, the, the person who was working with me, it, it made sense that I, I would ask uh, to release something and then to help me create something. Anyway. Yeah, I I mean, that, that, manifestation. Uh, I do experience a lot of because I somehow I just found out not a long time ago I'm a generator manifester. So it's not only I can generate and motivate and manifest at the same time. But uh, that's the mind control right there. And if you can empty your mind to the point, desire whatever your dream is right. and send it into the force, then you can manifest it. And um, it's a beautiful practice, but I would say one thing here, surrender to creator, because sometimes we force something or push something that it's actually waste of time or not necessary or yeah. might just break later. <clears throat> well, that, that's why I like to work with the, the Wisdom Center and, and say, hey, this is what I want to happen. And it usually works. No, I'll tell you another story about it private, more privately. Hey, um, enough is enough. There is a bicycle convention center at Lake, no, at um, Shasta. Thieves Park in Mount Shasta, a bicycle convention center. There's going to be room for a thousand cars and a whole bunch of bicycles. Now, if you're interested in that and uh, the rest of the world out there, it would be a very high vibrational event. There'll be music, there'll be um, all types of um, vendors lots of bicycles maybe some for sale swap me i don't know it's gonna be a journey to town wow can you imagine a thousand bicycles going through mount shots to town hey maybe we can go up to bunny flat we'll go up to bunny flat and up the mountain and down the, the mountain flat is right <laughs> ah get your finger over there. Oh, oh, there? There. <laughs> anyway, hey, thank you for uh, being here today. And uh, is there any classes you uh, are offering, offering the, the public? Um, yes, I help people to feel healthier and um, have the tools for healing themselves and helping others on Monday at 10 a.m. in the she thousand angel center in mountain shasta uh, we have a fit for life class which i give all the tools fit for, for healing okay. and i do cover most important things that uh helps for awakening as well which is breath different kind of motion we would talk about spiral motion of the snake and uh, spiral motion of the flower and uh, vertical motion of the snake so those two i cover also some tools how to use the crystals how to use tools to heal your body as well as exercises and stuff. So welcome to come and... All right, and, and where is it at? The... She Thousand Angel Center Mountain Shasta. It's one of the purpose buildings Mount, ever. <laughs> North Mount Shasta. I think uh, North Stage. Shasta Mount Shasta. Stage, Shasta stage? Old Stage. Oh, old, old, old Stage. Old Stage. So that would be South Old Stage. I'm not sure if they're South or North. Yeah. It's that, one of the purple the buildings there. So, yeah. In the uh, uh, midtown and uh, forward, like the park. On the way to park. Siskiyou Lake. On the way to Siskiyou Lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't go there. Go to the, what is it, the purple building? Purple building. <laughs> purple building, that's it. Where Power Organics is. Yes. Yeah. All right, that's where it's at. Yes. Yeah, so All right, I guess we're ready to roll home here. And I want to thank uh, our audience for being here today. <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you, Paula. And Paula was snoring into the mic so sweetly. We did snore. <laughs> <laughs> like I have also interview I want to share. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, will you close with a little f bit of a flute music? Let's do it, yeah. Well, let's finish rising that Kundalini and awakening through the whole entire humanity. We need it now.